What is going on, family? Late night, and we're going to talk about something that has something to do with finances, a little bit of finances, a little bit of law, a little bit of a breakdown on how I would personally handle this situation, okay? And, hey, as always, you want to protect your money. So this is making sure you don't get got through a scam or a legal slash potentially illegal jacking by law enforcement, you want to always try to avoid. So we definitely going to dive in. And this is actually a recent to topic. Is recent legislation that is in the process of making its way through Congress. So I thought it would be a good time to chop it up and talk about it. As always, if you're new to the channel and you check out this video, you get something from it, definitely hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, become a part of the intellectual savage family as I like to refer to our tribe over here. And, you know, it'll be something, try to, 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 to teach you something, entertain you, give you something. If you got something you want me to rap on, hey, just reach out. I'm definitely down. Now, law enforcement is a unique situation. There are a lot of times where law enforcement, they tend to skirt the rules and regulations, especially if you have no clue what your rights are. So we're definitely going to dive in it today. Before we get started, I got to give the caveat. I'm a licensed attorney, but not your attorney. So there's not legal or financial advice. Just giving my take and reaction to current events and finance issues and letting y'all know how I would move in certain situations related to real life or finance. Infotainment purposes. Always seek a professional in your local area. Now, I have, what, hmm, 10 years or so in the, the, the IG community. So let's start out by explaining what that is, because we're going to have to talk about the Inspector General's office, because they found something very important. Every governmental agency, well, not every, but most of, mostly every governmental agency has an inspector general's office. Presumably, the inspector general's office is an office that should have a high standards for ethics and following the rules and regulations. So if you want to make sure that the Department of Health and Human Services don't go too crazy, you want to make sure the Department of Justice not going too wild, you want to make sure uh, the IRS, the tax, uh, Treasury, Department of Treasury isn't going too wild, all of those agencies have their own inspector general's office. Those inspector generals, they investigate crimes that may occur within programs that fall under that specific governmental branch. Sometimes they do audits where they'll look at a program and say, let's audit this program, see what the do's and don'ts, the rules and requirements are. And if it's jacked up, we could tell y'all how you should go about fixing it. And sometimes they do evaluations where they'll evaluate a program. They make recommendations. Hey, we recommend that this is your program. We found these three areas of vulnerability to fraud or where you can improve your process. We recommend that you do A, B, and C. And then that agency has the opportunity to reply back and say, okay, we accept recommendation one. With regard to recommendation two, we we address that it's an issue, but instead of doing what your recommendation is, we're going to try to remedy this issue this way. So that's generally what an inspector general office does. Now let's pivot. Let's talk about traveling with cash. My general rule is, yo, I wouldn't travel. Well, let's start by saying you can travel across the United States really with any amount of money that you want. You got $5,000, $200. 10,000, 100,000 in a duffel bag like you money Mayweather, you can fly throughout the United States with any amount of cash. There's nothing against it. There's no crime. It's not illegal to do so. Now, would DFD do that? <laughs> probably not. I want to say probably the most I ever flown with in cash would be, I say maybe $1,500, $2,000. I probably was traveling somewhere overseas. I wanted to do a currency swap. And I just like, you know what, it's easier just to have the cash on me. But it was nothing really outlandish that would make me look like some type of cartel boss 
going across uh, state lines. And that was an international trip that I was on. So we're going to take a look at a video, see what's going on. After we see what's going on in the video, we're going to break down what can you do? Are they doing the right thing? If they aren't, what should they be doing? How you should approach it if you end up in this situation? We're going to look at some of the statistics on how much money law enforcement is finessing people out of when they come through the airport with cash. And then I'm going to wrap it up by talking a little bit about this legislation that is in the pipes, is trying to come up, is, is going, making its way through the system to try to cure this issue that we're going to talk about. So let's go ahead, queue up the video. Remember, general rule, do not travel with cash. If you buy something in cash, get a cashier's check, make an arrangement to withdraw the funds once you get to your destination. Typically, anything more than a couple thousand dollars, yeah, you could end up on one of these damn videos and then DFD would be up here talking about what you should do to get out of this shit. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and queue up this video. Hiding in plain sight at the busiest airport in the world. Drug agents walk the concourses blending in by dressing just like passengers. This is a DEA task force officer scanning passengers boarding a flight for Los Angeles. There's another. How do we know who they are? Because we use the same tactics to investigate them. After several passengers said they were targeted for warrantless searches at the gate or on the jet bridge. I'm a random search guy. So he says, so those white folks, and I'm the random search. Hollywood actor Jean Ellie was stopped by Clayton County officers while boarding a flight to LA. Were well, you here in Atlanta? Yep. Oh, are you here? Doesn't matter. Why are you asking me all these same questions? Check my bag, do what you gotta do with him so I can get out of here, please. The narcotics officers didn't find anything but kept asking questions of the Emmy winning actor. Plane's the purpose, you take it. Don't worry about it, man. She was supposed to call. Check my bag so I can get out of here, please. I just back here. Thank you. That whole thing is just so humiliating. Like, who thinks this is a, a, a proper way to treat anyone? Tabari Sturdivant is an Atlanta-based film director who was also flying to L.A. when agents stopped him at the departure gate. All my life, I pride myself on being an upstanding citizen. And you still do this to me. I'm clean, like, I'll comply. But, like, why, why me? Drug agents searched Tabari's bags in the boarding area in front of other passengers, some recording on their phones. I'm thinking more about, you know, making this plane than I'm even thinking about my rights at this point. Okay. <laughs> we, we occasionally got to take a pause uh, to, to, to talk about these things. Problem number one, and I get it, it's a tough situation to be in. You've already got through security. You're about to get on your plane. It's probably like the last call for alcohol. They like, yo, last board and final passengers, and you about to get on the plane, and you see these random plane dress dudes come up to start asking you. All you thinking about is getting on your plane. So I, I definitely get his point where he's thinking about making this flight over his rights, but uh, I don't think that's generally the greatest thing to do. Let's try to get through the video, then I'm gonna backtrack and talk about what some of the issues were as we uh, finished this up. Is that part of their strategy, you think? I think it's 100%. Records show that DEA and local police rarely find any drugs or make arrests during what they call cold consent searches at the gate. I see the finish line to get on the plane. Everybody knows that feeling of getting, uh, you know, right at the door or getting on the jetway when you get blindsided. I'm like, man, I got to get on this flight. And they were like, if you let us do our job, we'll get, I'll make sure you get on your flight. So I'm like, oh, do what you got to do. They didn't Crazy. find anything suspicious in Tabari's bag. So what were they looking for? He just is like, are you high? Are you, have you smoked? Do you it's have any drugs in this bag? Do you have any money? The DEA and other drug agents are seizing millions of dollars from departing passengers at Hartsfield-Jackson, mostly from flights to L.A., even though it's completely legal to travel domestically with any amount of cash. We found dozens of cases in Atlanta's federal court, USA v. some amount of currency. That's right. In most cases, they don't arrest the passenger. They arrest 
their money, even when no drugs are found. The probable cause statements show that the cash is administratively forfeited as drug money if the passenger can't prove on the spot that their money is innocent. You're either going to sign a consent form saying that you're allowing us to search them, okay. or I'm going to detain them. That's crazy as hell, right? Oh, man, that's crazy. It's just, it's just so much going on, and there's a lot that can be done to avoid this. Now, I will tell you, hey, when I, when I tell you what I would do in this situation to try to avoid this, chances are you're probably going to get held up just enough to miss your damn flight. But I think that's a, a, a small thing that you can rectify as well. But, hey, th this is terrible. I saw this, and I was like, yo, this... This is horrible. Then run my dog on it and get a search. Feel free to search the bag, sir. Are you willing to sign a consent? Yes, I will sign a consent. Like, see, dude should have been like, get your dog. You want to put your dog on it? Get your dog. Oh, man, I just can't. It's hard Feel to make you do this without search pausing. My bags. In this 2015 Department of Justice report, the Office of Inspector General told the DEA it should stop using a troubling technique causing passengers to believe a voluntary search is a mandatory TSA secondary inspection. Eight years later, we found DEA agents at Atlanta's airport using similar methods. We need different in TSA, man. People can like, give us a little more time to make more it. Time. He just approached me and he asked me for my ID. He didn't state who he was. He just asked me for ID. And I thought he was a, a Delta agent. He had airport credentials on. And so I, I gave it to him immediately. I thought this was how I was going to get on the plane or something. I don't know. The drug agents may be in plain clothes, but they're not undercover. This is Sergeant. That's crazy. How many flights have you been on with somebody after you got through security, randomly came up to you and was like, give me your ID? I don't know. Like, it, I mean, like, I get it. You want to get to where you're going, but a little common sense here, right? Because cause as you can see, when the news broadcasters give them a little bit of pushback, they're going to run off and scurry off. And that's what happened most times when people are doing something that may be borderline gray, not on the up and up, toe the line between right and wrong. When you shine a light on them, they're like, oh, let's get the hell out of Dodge. But I, I, I think that's crazy that oh, he had on these credentials. I gave it to him because I thought that's how I was going to get on the plane. Like, come on, bro. you. Uh, been on a, probably thousands of flights in your lifetime. Sometimes you got to just use a little common sense for something that's happening outside of the norm. Sergeant David Fikes, he and his canine Bane are still all over the Brookhaven Police Facebook page. Since Fikes was assigned to the DEA task force at the airport last year, records show he's been involved in seizing more than a million dollars in cash. His police department has received a 9% cut of that money, more than $100,000, even though Brookhaven PD is nowhere near the airport. If we have the ability to walk up to, say, Officer Fikes or to any one of these agents in the airport, what would you like us to ask them? How would you feel if somebody did this to you? How would you feel? We found Fikes and other plainclothes DEA task force officers by going to departure gates for L.A. flights. They stopped passengers at the boarding door, asking to see their documents before going through their carry-on bags. The searches we watched came up empty. The drug agents cased three different gates in Concourse A, blending in with passengers while we observed from a standoff distance. But it didn't take long before the task force officers spotted our phone and camera. Once they sat down, it was time for a cold consent interview of our own. Hey there, I'm with the news. You're Sergeant Fikes, aren't you? I'm with uh, Atlanta News First. Okay. How many innocent people do you have to search before you find what you're looking for? Sure, I've got nothing to say to you. Another officer was behind me, out of sight, <laughs> over my shoulder, giving hand signals to Fikes as I asked him questions. He is in the back. What about Sabari Sturdivant? Do you remember him? No? Took everything out your bag and put it all around in front of everybody and made you look like a criminal. Like, how would you feel, Officer Fisk? Why do people have to prove themselves innocent? You got nothing to say to these people? That's crazy that that happened. Um, I'm going to see. There's another story. I don't know. We may get into it because I don't want to be on... I don't want to be on crazy late going through this, but y'all see what's happening. They got agents at the airport, past the security checkpoint, right when you're about to get on, stopping you, asking you questions, 
getting a, a half ass finesse consent for them to search. Now, there's a few things going on here. Is the tactic to actually commit the search something that's illegal? I'm going to say no, but it's one of those things that are borderline where sometimes you'll see law enforcement put you in a situation where immediately you don't perceive you have the ability to object to whatever it is they're doing, delaying you from potentially missing your flight, saying something like, I'm going to go ahead and get the dogs. All of those type of things are things that will make a, a normal, everyday person, that's somebody who's been in law school, been in this shit forever, think that like, yo, this dude is probably an agent of TSA or whatever, and they would just go ahead and consent to it. So it doesn't make a difference if you give the consent by mistake. The point is you're giving the consent. So it's technically not illegal, but it is a little borderline shady how they're finessing the consent out of folks. Now, how would I handle this? First and foremost, I just don't think it's a good idea to travel with cash. I've seen two videos. One, it was a kid, a uh, young black guy, dreads. He had $8,000 cash. His grandfather passed away, left him a car. He sold the car, and he took his $8,000 to go from Atlanta to Los Angeles to shoot a music video. They stopped him, same type of concept, asking him the questions, went through, seized his money. The guy never got any criminal charges. It was not a civil asset forfeiture or anything like that. And this young brother actually had to get an attorney to go to court for six months. It was a six-month process to get his money back. After he paid the attorney, he only had about $3,000 out of the $8,000 that he lost. Now he has a second lawsuit where he is seeking uh, legal fees from the government agency for essentially causing them to have to go through that process. Now, his attorney fucked up because his attorney should have had the legal fees included in the petition to get the money back, but that's neither here nor there. The second example, and I'm just be honest, in all the examples I saw, I, haven't, I have yet to see an example where they stopped and did a random cold consent search of, you know, somebody who wasn't of my hue. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. The second case was a guy who was going to buy a vehicle, older black man for $39,000 cash. Same concept, stopped him, cold consent, got it on a little wishy-washy thing, end up confiscating, seizing the man's $39,000. He never had any criminal charges. It wasn't a civil asset forfeiture. And I don't even know if he went through the process of going through court. So let's talk about legally how you could deal with this if you're willing to potentially, you know, be late and miss a flight. You may not miss a flight because I think you got a few things going for you. Generally, an officer can't stop you to really ask you anything unless there's reasonable suspicion that criminal activity is afoot by articulable evidence. Well, DFD, that sounds like some whole complex stuff that some guy wrote in a book in the 1800s. Probably so. This is essentially what it means. In order for an officer to even stop you to start asking you questions, they have to be conducting what's called an investigatory stop. It has to be reasonable suspicion that criminal activity is afoot. That doesn't mean that just because you got a shitload of money on you, that's reasonable suspicion that criminal activity is afoot. Most of the times, and Courts look at factors, they look at what's going on, the circumstances, but generally, most cases, you'll see reasonable suspicion that criminal activity is afoot if law enforcement gets an actual call that a crime has occurred or that one is occurring and a person fits the description. If the officer has actually seen visual cues and evidence that could be articulated in court or in an affidavit where it leaves a uh, trier of fact, a judge to believe that an actual crime occurred. In these situations at the airport, it ain't no way possible. I can't see any way on the scenarios that we just watched where reasonable suspicion that criminal activity was afoot. It's just, they just had a lot of cash. So you are technically within your right to say, you know what? I don't even want to have a conversation with you. 
Uh, is, are you detaining me? Because if you're detaining me, I'm under arrest. If I'm under arrest, for what? What's the probable cause? If you want to ask these questions, what's your reasonable suspicion that I have committed a crime? What is it? Did anybody call and give a complaint uh, that I fit the description? No, I'm sitting here like the rest of these guys, so I'm going to go about my business. Now, we saw the finesse move they tried to pull. Hey, I'm going to go get the dogs. Go get the dogs. <laughs> this is just me. This is exactly how I would handle it because this is how you can handle it. In Go get the dogs because you can't restrain my movement because I'm not under arrest. So while you go get the dogs, I'm going to keep going to my seat. And if you really want to get the dogs, you're going to have to bring them on the plane. Now, what's realistically going to happen in this situation? I tell you, anytime there's an interaction with law enforcement, as a matter of course, even I do this, <laughs> and I know this shit like the back of my hand, but anytime there's an interaction with law enforcement, I always tell people, pull out your phone and immediately start recording because you want to have something to memorialize what's going on because we all know, let me see if I got my prop over here, yeah. law enforcement isn't above. Hey, they, they on the bus putting on this blue hat and lying about something or making something up or embellishing it or engaging in hyperbole, hyping it up more than what it is. So generally, if something like this happens, the very first thing that you should do that I would do, pull out my cell phone. I'm immediately going to start recording. The first question is, am I under arrest? If I'm not under arrest, you don't have a reason to detain me and restrict my movement. If you want to ask me questions, what's your reasonable suspicion for stopping me that a crime has actually occurred? Because I know you didn't see anything because I've been sitting in this damn airport lounge for two hours because I got here two hours before my flight. And I know you didn't get any complaints about a crime being committed and me fitting the description. So I don't think you have anything. I'm going on this plane. Now, I know that's easier said than done. Law enforcement, big, bad federal agents. A lot of people are going to be shook. That's just kind of the approach I take. You may miss your flight. They may try to hold you up. If they hold you up too long, that's going to be a problem on, on them. That could have some legal consequences. Depending on how long they hold you up, it could be considered, you know, hey, you restricted their movement. You had them in custody. And that could be an actual lawsuit on, the, on that you can file against them. Now, the other thing that's going to be interesting about this, and I, I think just from a, a common sense standpoint, is don't fly with cash. You do have rights. They technically can't hold you and stop you. You should always record the interaction. Now, what if I got on the plane and they did seize my money? Well, if they do seize your money, they do have some recourse. Um, there's an actual whole book, a guide. Um, I didn't, let me see, do I got it here? I didn't, print, I didn't print out the guide, but they actually have a guide that lays out the rules and regulations on how you can appeal with the federal or the state agency to get money that was seized back. So you do have some recourse, but more likely than that, you're probably going to have to hire an attorney to go through that process for you because I took a look at it and it's not too complex, but it's something that if I wasn't versed at doing this shit, I wouldn't want to cross that bridge on my own. You know what I mean? It could be more time consuming than I would actually need it to be. Now, in that video, they talked about how the local law enforcement, they had a task force where they were working with the federal government and they seized over a million dollars. That means that local agency got back about $100,000, a little bit more than $100,000. Some states have enacted laws to try to curb this conduct. And so, for example, where I'm at, where I live, local law enforcement can't take a part of any administrative uh, asset forfeiture that may happen if the amount of cash that's taken is less than $100,000. So if they had a task force where it's like North Carolina law enforcement officers, for example, and they work in a task force with the feds, the feds seize your $30,000, that local law enforcement isn't going to get any cash from it because some states have that rule where it has to be over a certain dollar amount for local law enforcement to get cash from it. How does this curb this? Well, it takes away the incentive 
for local law enforcement to engage in this activity. Local law enforcement with federal officers who are in plain clothes, it kind of increases that feeling that you have an obligation to comply, especially if you got somebody with a local uh, law enforcement officer's uniform on that you're used to seeing because you live in that area. So I think some states actually made the right move by doing that. Now, according to the IG report, they looked at two agencies. They looked at the administrative forfeitures that were done by the Department of Treasury, and like 97% of them, if they took your money, 97% of them end up having some type of criminal trial or criminal investigation associated with it. Whereas when they looked at some other agencies, like the one they talked about, the DEA, and 60% of people who had money, uh, a, a civil asset forfeiture, these airport cases, 60% of them never got charged. So like they said, no case against you is a case against your money. People don't really know how to deal with it. They don't know the process to go through to get it back. So it goes to show that there is a problem out there, especially if the inspector general's office looked at it, identified it as a problem and said, yo, y'all need to stop doing these things because it's kind of sketch and it could end up in a big ass lawsuit for you all. Now, the final thing is, this is one of the very rare things where you see both sides of the aisle actually working to try and fix it. You have Republicans and Democrats who have proposed legislation in place to try to curb this. Why do you think this is in place? Because, hey, they rich as hell and they probably travel with a lot of cash and don't want it to happen to them. Now, like I said, every example I saw, I have yet to see an example of someone who. Let me see. I'm trying I'm trying to look at these scenarios. I see some videos and all these videos. I'm trying to look at these videos and it's it's kind of a cold game. Like, yo, know, they they picking their oh let's 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 pull this. This, this is the one I talked about where the guy got thirty nine thousand dollars uh essentially finessed from him using this thing. Let's go ahead and pull this up. I think this was interesting. I, I talked about it. Let's go ahead and, and watch through this video. My money got seized by the police. It seized 39500 Meet Jerry. He lives just outside Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm a truck driver, owner of Triple J Logistics. Jerry manages two trucks and two drivers. He used the trucking industry to turn his life around after leaving prison a decade ago. I got my commercial driver's license in 2012 when I got out of prison. I started my company in 2015. With his business going well, Jerry looked into expanding his fleet. I was looking to add on a, a third truck to increase my revenue of my company, but that didn't happen. That didn't happen because he did something completely legal. Fly domestically with cash. I was going to buy a truck for my business from an auction in Phoenix. They had the brand that I like. I like that ISX mode, I love it. It was one of them reactions where I needed to go get this thing. When he stepped off the plane in Phoenix, Arizona to pick up his luggage, Jerry was confronted by law enforcement. And he pulled out his badge and he said, uh, may I see your ID? I passed him my ID. He asked me, was I carrying any drugs? I told him no. He asked me, was I carrying any large sums of money? I said yes. Jerry was taken to a back office where he was interrogated for an hour. I never thought anything was wrong. I just thought he wanted to take a look at the money. That's crazy. And verify where I had got this income and he was gonna let me go with my money. Police refused to believe that the money was Jerry's, but the only evidence they had was his old criminal convictions. About an hour, hour later, he came out with a piece of paper and uh, laid it on the desk. He said, if you uh, don't sign this paper, then you're gonna be arrested. And I, I didn't know arrested for what, so. Uh, Eventually, I signed the paper, and uh, he told me I was free to go. That's fucked up. They used this brother's previous conviction in his fear of being arrested. He knew. He was like, arrested for what? 
but his fear of being arrested was used to finesse him out of his thirty nine thousand dollars that he was using to try to start a legitimate fucking business. This story is disgusting. Like, yo, this a story like this, this shit make me wanna like do this dude case pro bono. This case got a, this this video is this happened a while ago, but this was one of the scenarios I saw that just, you know, I knew when y'all see it, y'all was gonna be like, yo, that's fucked up. So officers took all the money Jerry was carrying, and now the government is working to keep it through civil forfeiture. I was carrying thirty nine thousand five hundred. I got the money from saving a loan from my family members, and I paid myself through my business. Jerry's business has been hurting because he doesn't have a third truck or the money he was saving. Ever since they took my money, we're just we're just basically uh, making making ends meet right now. To get his money back, Jerry had to first prove to Arizona that the money belonged to him. My attorney presented tons of evidence. I didn't feel like we was gonna lose that. I thought we had did more than enough for them to give my money back. Jerry lost when the Arizona judge ruled that he wasn't the owner of the money because Jerry could not prove that the cash wasn't connected to any crime. Now the Institute for Justice is teaming up with Jerry to appeal the decision. I thought you had to do something illegal for him to. Y'all hear that shit? The judge said you you don't get your money back because you can't prove that is not committed. No, y'all should have to fucking prove that it is committed to a crime. If you can't prove it's not committed to a crime, give him his shit back. Y'all think this, yeah, hey, I'm telling you, man. Some of these videos ain't always for fun. These videos is that I that I do is is for real life situations out there. Cause I damn sure don't like seeing people get caught up for for some BS like this, especially somebody who's trying to do something different in his life, who's doing something different. To seize your money. I, I never thought that they could take my money based on my criminal past. No one should be required to prove their own innocence to keep their property. The Institute for Justice will fight with Jerry for- All right, so, so, so Jerry got an organization to help him, but y'all see the type of things that's going on. I, I talked a little bit about the, uh, let me see if I could pull it up. Let me just pull this up. I just want I just want to show it. We already talked about this. We already talked about this IG report, but sometimes I just like to like to put the visuals on it so y'all can see. DA sees four billion from people since 2007. Most were never charged with a crime. And this goes on to talk about the Justice Department Inspector General report. That's crazy as fuck. That's crazy as hell. But, you know, I show y'all that to let y'all know that it actually does happen. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about, I, I kind of told y'all generally, if this happens to you at the airport, how you should do it uh, or approach it if you want to actually stand a shot. And, and you can't be you can't you can't be scared, though. Sometimes you got to be willing to just stand on some shit. I stand especially for thirty nine thousand dollars. If it was like two, three thousand dollars, maybe I'd be like, ah. But thirty nine thousand dollars, nah. I'm gonna turn into a goddamn constitutional law savant. But immediately record the interaction. Ask, are you being detained? Are you being, are you under arrest? If so, for what? If you aren't being detained and you aren't under arrest, you don't have any ability to restrict my movement. It, you're conducting an investigatory stop. What is the reasonable, articulate? articulable suspicion of a criminal activity being foot a foot and what is the evidence because they aren't going to have any i know they don't have any random calls they we'll get the dogs like we saw in the video let them bring the dogs out i would much rather them bring a dog out a dog sniff my luggage and doesn't react to it and i kept my ass on the plane and i keep my thirty nine thousand dollars than to randomly have them then say just go ahead search it and y'all take my fucking money that's just kind of my opinion uh, as to how you should approach it. But I want to pull up this article real quick so we can talk about the legislation that Congress is, is filtering its way through Congress to try to avoid this because people realize that this should not happen. 
Oh, <laughs> hey man, they don't like what I'm talking about on here. They was like, no, only the dislike button is working. That's crazy. <laughs> they don't like what I'm talking about on here. They like, yeah, we gonna disable this dude like button. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, sis. It's all good. Even even if you circle back or whatever, long as you watch it, you leaving a comment. I appreciate the support. You know what I mean. So it is what it is. We go, hey, we gonna fight the power, right? <laughs> That's crazy. Let's go ahead and uh, pull up this. Uh, let me pull up this last thing I'm gonna show y'all before we get out of here, because I want to talk about this legislation that is currently pending, or they're trying to get passed through. Let's see. All right, all right, here you go. And this is recent, two days ago. All right. A rare sign of unity across the aisle. Members of Congress want to make it harder for the government to take your cash without charging you for a crime. Fucking finally. Pardon my language. Finally something that normal people agree on, that people want done, that they are actually trying to do. Really, it's not that hard. People want shit done, do the shit that people want done. <laughs> All right. You ought to be convicted before they can take your stuff, U.S. Senator Rand Paul told Atlanta News First Investigates in his Capitol Hill office. Hey, shout out to Rand Paul for saying that. Hey, Rand Paul is in a... We probably don't agree on some stuff. I say majority of stuff. But, hey, on this one, I think he's 100% right. The Kentucky Republican has repeatedly uh, filed a bill to change civil asset forfeiture laws. The bill has never made it out of committee. Hmm. I wonder why. It's never made it out of committee in the U.S. Senate, but the House of Representatives version of the Fifth Amendment Integrity Restoration Act is closer than ever to becoming law. We are going to treat law-abiding citizens at the very least the same as we treat criminals, U.S. Representative Tim Wahlberg told Atlanta News Investigate. The Michigan Republican has been fighting for nine years to get his bill to the House floor. Nine years to get a bill to the House floor that says, if you didn't commit a crime, the government shouldn't be able to take your shit and keep it. Come on, what what what, what are we doing here, people? Like it, it, that that is that is like sad and and utterly uh, ridiculous. Atlanta News Investigate exposed the inner workings of the drug the DEA program called Operation Jetway, DEA trains local police and federal agents to blend in with passengers at airport gates. Uh, when we recorded them from selecting passenger for searches at boarding door, the court records show if the agents find $5,000 or more in cash on a passenger flying from Atlanta to Los Angeles, they'll seize the money as proceeds of drug trafficking and the vast majority of cases reviewed the passengers were not arrested or charged with a crime. You'll catch some crooks in this process as well, but sadly, we're catching too many innocents who have to fight their way out of this bind, Wahlberg said, and many of them can't do it. Exactly. It's, it's a process to do it, and it's not easy. It's complicated. That stuff isn't written to, for you to read it and be like, okay, it's step one, two, and three. You're supposed to be innocent until prove it guilty. Not, oh, you're guilty, give me your stuff, and then you can have it back if you prove you didn't get it through ill-gotten gains, Paul said. That's not the way our country is supposed to work. The FAIR Act would increase the standard of proof for the government to keep money after it is seized using civil asset forfeiture in airports or anywhere else. Currently, the standard is preponderance of the evidence, which simply means it's more likely than not that the money is from drug trafficking. The burden on the government is far lower than beyond a reasonable doubt standard required for criminal convictions if the person is charged with a crime. Therein lies the problem. The reason that they can do it, presumably, is because it's a lower standard. But the things that I talked about on how to avoid this, these standards apply after they take it. After they take it, these are the arguments they're making. The things that I gave you are things that you can use constitutional arguments, well-founded principles and criminal law and procedures to actually prevent them from even having the ability to search your stuff. 
to do a search, it has to be a warrant. It has to be an exigent circumstances, which they don't have. So they're getting in these people's luggage because the people are consenting, even though there may be some pressure to make them feel like they don't have a choice. They are consenting. We watched the videos. All of the guys consented. They was like, oh, I was worried about getting on my plane. He had an ID card. I don't give a damn. These guys are consenting. So you got to avoid consenting to the search and you can avoid all of this hassle, I think. Hey, you may miss a flight, but I'd rather miss a flight than lose 39. I'd rather miss a flight than lose $5,000. I mean, that's just uh, me. Let me see. Give them at least the benefit of the doubt that a criminal gets, Wahlberg said. Federal court records show task force officers will seize money if a passenger can't prove on the spot that their money was earned legally. Unlike a criminal, they have to prove that they're innocent and it's not the other way around, which we normally expect, Wahlberg said. That's the problem. About 90% of cases are handled under administrative asset forfeiture, which means seizures is never reviewed by a judge. Under the current law, the agency that seizes the money gets to keep it. DOJ took in $1.3 billion last year in civil asset forfeiture, according to an audit. With most of that coming from the DEA, the DOJ has over $5 billion in civil asset forfeiture funds, which the department can spend however it pleases. Most of it, records show, is spent on programs that leads to more cash seizures. So the moral of this article is, yo, it looks like that there are some people, uh, both Republican <laughs> and Democrat, uh, who are trying to fix this right. Rand Paul isn't a name where you normally be like, okay, Rand Paul, I see you. But hey, shout out to him and other, uh, you know, Republican senators who, uh, you know, congressmen, congresswomen who actually support this bill. I just went and tried to hit like on one of the other videos. I couldn't hit like on that one either. I just wanted to let you know. That's hilarious. Like, I don't know. That's weird. I don't know why, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> hey, holding the brother back, y'all. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about this and let y'all know what was going on. Um, the whole point of this channel is about finances, financial freedom, not getting finessed, not getting scammed, not getting taken advantage of. And so that's the content we're going to get put out. So, you know, hey, if you enjoyed this video, you got any value from it. If you can't hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, anything you can do to support just viewing it. I definitely appreciate it. Y'all take care. Have a good, blessed, safe holiday. I might do something tomorrow because I, I had a funny, I'm, I got another story that I really wanted to do because it was something that, it didn't happen to me personally, but somebody posted on like my social media time, like, yo, DM me if you're trying to get this cash app sauce. I made $9,000. You can make it too. DM me. And I was like, I immediately was like, man, I was like, really? Somebody posted this on my timeline? So I, 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 I dove in and I was like, what is this cash app scam that everybody got going on? And I found some things that was interesting. My son enlightened me to some stuff because, you know, these young kids make songs about scam culture. So he was able to enlighten me about some things. And I, I think I really want to break that down because I feel like there's a lot of people out there who... They be, I, I literally looked at the comments to this one post and it was so many people like, yo, this is this is a great game. Uh, how can I do it? I'm going to DM you. Check your DMs. I just DM you. And I just was like, no, people no. it's it's anytime you think you can get something for nothing. You're probably going to get nothing for something, which means you're going to get shit and you're going to give up a lot. <laughs> so I, I might do that video uh, tomorrow live because I really want to get it out because I just thought it was funny that it appeared on my timeline. I had to block out some of the names to protect the stupid. Y'all know how it go, but it is what it is. Yo, y'all be safe, be blessed, enjoy your family, enjoy this holiday season. Y'all take care. Peace.